guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tanya, and today I'm going to do a reaction video for you. Um, today I'm going to react to Kinda Australian again. Uh, I've reacted to her before, and I enjoy her video, so I'm going to react to another one. Uh, this one is a few months old, and it's called America versus Australia Driving. The differences between driving in Australia compared to America. And I am, I am curious about this because... Um, driving laws are different everywhere you go and driving can vary on what side of the road you drive on also depending on where you where you're going so here in the states obviously we drive on the on the right hand side of the road um so if and if i were to go somewhere where it was the opposite of that i feel like i would be so confused i don't think i would be able to do it <laughs> i would just get so confused i think um but yeah i don't know if she's going to talk about like that sort of stuff um but i assume it's going to be like the opposite because you guys drive on the other side right like the uk i think you do um but i'm sure you guys have different laws and all this stuff so yeah we're going to go ahead and just get into it and see uh what the uh, differences are here we go G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this video because I am probably not the best person to break this video. The funny thing is I married an Aussie truckie and I am an American who has a paralyzing fear of driving. Yeah, that's right, I'm absolutely terrified to drive. Doesn't matter where you put me, put me behind the wheel. My daughter's like that, she's terrified. Car and I get scared. But there are so many differences to driving over in the States compared to here in Australia. And since I've lived here for over two years, even though I'm not a driver myself, I do think I'm pretty qualified to talk about some of these differences. So grab a bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Number one, let's get the most obvious one out of the way. Here in Australia, people drive on the opposite side of the road. In the States, we drive on the right-hand side. Here in Australia, we drive on the left-hand side, like most other Commonwealth countries. So naturally, as part of this, the steering wheel is on the other side of the car. And if you're an American who's moved over here, let me know in the comments down below, how many times did you end up accidentally getting into the driver's seat instead of the passenger seat because you were not used to the steering wheel I would wheel do that 100% of the, other side of the time. Of the car. I, Number three I are know. L plates and P plates here. And there is nothing like this over in the States, and I wish there was. Most places in the States, you get your learner's permit, and then you go on to a Cinderella license, and then you get a full license. And a Cinderella license isn't in every state, and it typically means that you can only have so many people traveling in a car with you. You can only be driving up to a certain point during the day. Whereas here in Australia, you have L plates and then two stages of P plates before you get a full unrestricted driver's license. And on top of that, these are plates that are actually required to be- Um, we don't have that for like plates or stickers or anything like that, but I mean, we do kind of have like, um, when you first get your license, when you're 16, I, it's been so long, but I feel like for the first year or something, you can only have like one passenger or I don't know. I think there's some rule to that. Put on the outside of your car. So everybody around you knows that if you're a learner, they need to give you a little bit more space. You are legally required to go slower than other people. If you have oh, a red wow. P plate, you are again, legally required to only go a certain speed. You can't always go with the speed of traffic. And people understand that around here. A lot of them have had to go through that same system themselves. Interesting. Some people are sympathetic, others do get really annoyed. But I do wish we had a system like this over in the States because it is so smart. Because in the States, you have no idea who's a learner and who's an experienced That's driver true. who's been driving for 50 years. Number four I would say are everybody, different rego slips that are required. I would say everybody in the States sucks at driving. <laughs> for sure, everybody in my town. Oh my god, this cat. There's a pink slip, there's a green slip, there's a blue slip. Each of them have a different meaning to it, whereas over in the States, we don't have this. We have a once a year inspection that we have to pass. And I don't know if they still do this in the States, but the one point in time where I did have a car, they used to actually put stickers on the back of your license plate with the month and year of your inspection. And if you didn't have the most recent sticker for that year, guess what? You were getting pulled over and getting a ticket. Here, all of that is electronically tied together and you need different rego slips. It's not like every single car needs a green slip. Every single car needs a pink slip. It's not like it's one color rego slip that covers everything. There's different ones. 
Number five are electronic driver's licenses. And again, I think this is something that is absolutely genius that Australia does because it is so convenient to have your driver's license tied to an app on your phone. I would not like instead this. Instead of constantly having to have your physical license. I would not want this. I do not want this ever to come to America ever. I don't trust it. I want an actual card. I want my actual license on me. I don't trust electronics and apps and anything can happen. I just, I don't, I don't trust it. <laughs> I would not want to do this. License on you. Because if you're one of those people who routinely forgets your wallet, but always remembers to bring your cell phone because you're so used to tap and pay, you have your license on your phone. You don't have to worry about making sure you have your physical not license me. on you in case something happens and you get pulled over. Most places in the States, electronic licenses aren't a thing. And I'm saying most places just to give a little bit of grace. I've never heard of electronic licenses being a thing over in the States, I but I don't think, it's I don't think anybody by does state, it. So there are 50 of them. There might be some place where there's an electronic license. In Pennsylvania, there absolutely was not. But it is genius that Australia does this. Number six are these small utes. There is nothing like this over in the States. Over in the States, we're used to pickup trucks. Big, massive, giant pickup trucks. And as far the further south you go, the bigger the pickup trucks get. Whereas here in Australia, yeah, we're getting slightly bigger utes going on, but they're also these smaller utes, like little Holden utes. And utes with trays on them, instead of having like a full blown ute with like five seats, like, they're just different sized utes over here. Whereas over in the States, you just have big, bigger, and massive. Okay. Number seven is that there are a- That's not true at all. <laughs> First of all, um, I learned about the utes in my Discord. Um, they look really cool uh but it's not true that like every truck in this in the states is big we have small trucks too we also have trucks that i saw a truck today in the walgreens parking lot that the front end looked like a jeep and the rest of it was a truck bed so I mean, we have every kind of truck every size of truck every style of truck like i she i guess she's from pennsylvania so maybe just in pennsylvania it's just not so common to see trucks but here in illinois there's all kinds of trucks. A lot more motorbikes on the road over here in Australia than you'll typically see over in the States. And while you might see a lot of motorcycles over in the States when summer comes and people pull them out and start riding around a lot more often, here in Australia it's actually quite common for people to use motorbikes as a means of transportation or a means of commuting back and forth to work. Posties here on motorbikes. You will see posties on motorbikes everywhere around Australia. They're economical. Filtering is legal here. Helmets are a requirement here if you want to ride a motorbike. Well, obviously you still have all the typical dangers that come with riding a motorbike or a motorcycle. You're a little bit more prepared and a little bit more safe here in Australia compared to the States, which was something that scared the hell out of me the first time Mark did it. I almost had a heart attack. I'd never been on a motorbike before and he was filtering at stop signs. I had no idea that that was a thing because in the States that is illegal. Here, it's not only legal, but between means. bike riders at least, it's encouraged because it is a safety thing. If you're in a car and you get rear-ended, yeah, you might suffer some damage, but if you're on a motorbike and you get rear-ended, there's a good chance that you're not walking away from that accident. So it's very common for people who have a full motorbike license here to filter. And if you're not expecting it and you didn't know that was a thing, it can scare the hell out of you. Next are mandatory- But I don't know what that means. What does filtering mean? Did I just miss her explain it? I don't really know what that means. I don't have a motorcycle. I've ridden on the back of them before, but I don't have one. I don't drive one, so I don't really know what, even what that means. Motorbike helmets. Also mandatory bike helmets if you're just riding a regular bike or a push bike. Those are required by law here. Every state and territory requires you to wear a helmet. Over in the States, it's not really a thing if you're riding a motorcycle that a helmet is a legal requirement. In fact, I remember we rented a road bike in Hawaii and the guy gave us a weird look when Mark asked for helmets for us to rent. They had some, and let me tell you, they were probably the crappiest helmets I've ever seen. I would say that varies place to place. Um, we have the idiots around town who, who ride around on their motorcycles without a helmet and being like, they're not being very safe on the road. Um, they're driving in and out of traffic and being obnoxious. Um, but then you have people here that ride their motorcycles and they're extremely safe and passenger and driver both have helmets and like it just it's a person to person thing. I mean, we may not have the law. I don't know if it's a law, but I mean, there are a lot of people who do wear helmets. 
We have a lot of people who don't, but we have a lot of people who do. But technically they were helmets. Whereas here in Australia, helmets for a motorbike are a legal requirement. It should be a legal riders, requirement here. Not just for for passengers as well. So if you're riding as a pillion on a motorbike, you are also required to have a helmet. Number 10 is speed limits that are painted on the motorways. It's something so small, but let me tell you, it is genius because I've never ridden on a motorway in the States that have the speed limit painted on. I haven't either. It is either. something so small, but so smart, and I wish they had that over in the States. Next are different car brands. There are car brands in the States that you don't see here and vice versa. I've never seen a Holden over in the States, but the same token, I've never seen a Chevy here in Australia. So coming oh, over funny. here, there were a few new types of cars that I just had to get used to seeing. My very first car Holden's was a Chevy. are probably one of the most popular ones that I can think of that you don't see over in the States. But yeah, expect to see some new car brands when you are out and about in Australia. Next up, we're seeing roundabouts, even in big parts of the cities here. Where I grew up in the States, roundabouts were not a thing, and they do tend to- That's not true. <laughs> roundabouts are very much- <laughs> That was twisty. Roundabouts are very much a thing in the U.S. This is something that for some reason is going there around the internet that the U.S. has no roundabouts. We do have roundabouts. We don't have as much of them as the U.K. and maybe Australia and wherever else, but we do have them. Some states have, have more of them than other states, but we do have them. A thing more in like the rural areas of the states or in the more rural states. But I was born and raised in a big city over in the States, and I had never seen a roundabout before I moved to Australia. It just weren't a thing over in the States. It is like a four-way stop sign. That is the norm. Whereas here, roundabouts are a lot more common. And It is true that a four-way stop sign is a lot more common, but roundabouts do exist. We have one in town. Statistically, roundabouts are also a lot safer. And last but not least, one thing that trips me up time and time again is calling it petrol instead of oh, gas, yeah. which is short for gasoline. I know a lot of Aussies love to say, no, it's not gas, it's petrol. Gas is a gas. Gas isn't a liquid. Obviously, it is short for gasoline. But here in Australia, they call it petrol. We call it petrol. I sometimes call it petrol. But that's it for this video, you guys. Let me know if there's anything down below that you think I missed. Because again, I don't drive over here, but my husband's a truckie. And I feel like I at least have enough experience to make this video. So let me guys know if you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really, really do appreciate the support, you guys. It means so much to me, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. So I think the thing with her is that uh, she's kind of stuck in her own Pennsylvania mind frame, possibly. I don't, like, I don't know that much about her, but it seems like she's kind of basing everything off of Pennsylvania and um and I guess I would if it were me I would do the same thing with Illinois with like my own perspective of things but uh to say that like something is not a thing in the states when it is a thing in the states is kind of naive um maybe they don't have any in Pennsylvania I don't know I've never been to Pennsylvania but just certain things that she says I feel like she's Maybe in her perspective, these things were never a thing. She never saw them, which is fine. There are plenty of things in the States that that are a thing that I've never seen too. But um, if she's talking about them in a video, um, then I think she needs to be a little careful about, about what she says does or doesn't exist in the States just because every state is wildly different from each other. Um, but yeah, anyway, this was, this was interesting. I was kind of hoping she might go more into like, like rules of the road sort of, um, cause that would be interesting. But there were some things that I learned, obviously, like you guys have the speed limit painted on the freeway, which is cool. I've never seen that here in the States before. Um, not that I would really follow it anyway, because I'm a speed demon and I like the speed and I that's just how I am. But yeah, this was an interesting one. Uh, I got away from like the phrases and slangs and um, stuff like that to learn something a little bit different. And it was fun. I guess that's going to do it for this video though. Um, let me know in the comments what you would like me to react to next and maybe I will uh, do that. But if you enjoyed this one, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done that yet, and I'll see you next time.